I'm Ember Knight. And this is Welcome to Jackass. Welcome to Jackass. It is a podcast, a video, a visual. It is a podcast with a visual. It's not always sound, is it? <laughs> this is just exactly how you stand. Can we play the tape back? I don't think I talk like this, do I? <laughs> a podcast with a visual. I think I'm a little bit lower register. I was assigned male at birth. Welcome to Jackass. <laughs> yeah, that's better. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I don't. This is nonsensical. You don't. You know, so I couldn't do an impression of you. It's not. Um, I'd be the. I think both of us are probably. It's actually would be impossible to do. Like, uh, I can't like, do your voice. I can't do your voice. No. But I think we could do like, um, like m- metaphorical impressions of of our. I think you know, like like our our personalities. Mm. I don't want to do that though. No, because <laughs> I think I think, and if I if you did it but for me, but we could me, work on it. Yeah, and we could send each other. You know, we could we could make little videos, but very short clips. Yeah, yeah. just slowly ruin our friendship over time yeah. rather than in one full spurt. You're just gonna get. I'm just gonna be in full Joker makeup, and I'm gonna be like, I'm the Joker, baby. And that's, that, that'll be it. <laughs> Cut and print. <laughs> oh man, I almost dressed like the Joker for the show today. Really? Yeah, I almost... Well, I, I... So one of my Joker looks, as you know, because mm-hmm. you were there, but I'll describe it like you weren't, mm-hmm. is the... What was it? The classic... The classic Joaquin Phoenix Joker look with the red suit. I have, like, a kind of a femme version of that that I want to start just wearing around town. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know why I didn't put it on, but but maybe next time. You want to do a Suits episode next time? I think we should do Let's suits. Let's do it. Because you got your cool blue one. Yeah, it's covered in period blood. Let's suit up. And mine's red, so you won't... And so I, they're by, the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the same. We'll be matching. What's What could be more Joker than dying a suit with period blood? <laughs> I don't know. Things, I don't know. Well, I read comics, so I know. Uh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um... How are you? I'm okay. I had quite a week. I put a record out. Congratulations. Thanks. I'm tired. Uh, I but I did make it to the shower today. That's good. Congratulations. But you did tell me, and I hope it's okay if I I reveal this. I put back on the shirt I slept in. (laughs) (laughs) I did. Yeah, I did. did. Um, There's something about that that is like it's it. It's not that much different than just not showering and like. Like wearing the same shirt through, you know, if from you, if waking. You were, if your face was all the way in my ass, there <laughs> there would be a difference. But when you're not, there's not much. I'm of so a glad we don't record the show that way. <laughs> that would be one. Since it's be your difference. partner is the producer. Speaking it of be. which, should we introduce our guest? Yes. <laughs> uh, so today on the show we have the producer and the technician of the pod, uh, Bobby McCoy. Give Bobby it up. McCoy. I'm Studio gonna separate. Audience. It looks like I'm calling into the podcast, but I have He's the same right couch. over there. Um, <laughs> how are you, Bobby? I f- I feel uh, great. I'm happy to be here on the the Jackass podcast. It's called it's Welcome called to Welcome. Jackass. It's called the You're Jackass. You're a producer on it. You came podcast. up with the name, <laughs> Bobby. What is your history with Jackass? I mean, uh, did you grow up with it? Did you grow up watching it? And I've t- I've told Ember this before. My, I mean, it's it's disputable, but my first memory is Jackass. Wow! Will you my, tell? <laughs> my like I the, wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> Had a feeling. Two, I'm glad I. <laughs> <laughs> the two earliest things I remember. <laughs> are Jackass and 9-11. You're so young. It hurts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, like, actually hurts. Like, the first thing I remember is seeing, like, Home Alone 2 in theaters, and that sucks. <laughs> oh. Wow, Jackass and 9-11. And that really made you the artist you are today. Would yeah. you agree? Oh, 100%. Um, yeah, my parents had a little TV in their room that they would just leave on. 
and I would just hang out in their room while they were gone all the time. Did they know? They didn't know you watched. I think they didn't care because I remember. <laughs> I remember I used to say, I used to like w- ask them to put it on, but I like knew enough to know I couldn't say jackass, and I would call it funny, but. Because I thought that was like a way. I thought you could call it that. You know, I knew that ass meant butt. I didn't I don't think I knew butt? what jack ass meant. Not jack butt, but funny, funny butt. butt. I thought like jack was part of the curse word, I guess. Wow. <laughs> and they bought it. They were like, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's so crazy that that would make them cool with it. Because I mean, really, the title is like in a lot of ways the least offensive. Yeah, yeah it's the tamest <laughs> yeah, they, part. They pretty much didn't care what I, what I watched. I, I think know. as long as it didn't have like sex scenes, I could watch. Like even the jackass stuff was like innocent enough to them. Yeah, I guess that's weird when I think about because like I was specifically not allowed to watch MTV growing up, which huh. is just like that's like if you wrote that as like controlling parents in a script, it'd be like that's too that's that's silly. But no, that was literally the rules. <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't I, allowed. I wasn't allowed to watch anything except The Lion King on VHS. So nothing surprises me. <laughs> yeah, but but Bobby, w- so you were like a—that's uh, true, by the oh. way. But um, you were like a a very like, you know, like um, that classic movie trope of the kid who's raised by the TV. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, not to like fully psychoanalyze you, but you know, like your 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 auteur sensibilities definitely feel like they're they're coming from somebody who who grew up watching a show like this and and that it was probably very much a part cuz this this is definitely informed a lot of the work you've done with Ember I'd say Oh 100%. Is it is it hard for you to watch us who know so little about this show? <laughs> Honestly, it's not like it doesn't bother me but I will say like ever producing this podcast once every 5 minutes I like know the name of someone you're trying to reference or like know what at, like I know so many behind the scenes stories too. like that's the other part like aside from watching it when I was really young I had like a huge resurgence with it when I was in maybe like eighth grade where I like obsessively like I had all the DVDs we're using for the podcast are mine from when I was in eighth grade. And it was like the only thing I would watch for like two years. And then last summer I had, I relapsed and got, that's when I was showing it to Ember for the that's first time. That's literally when I got into and it. And that's when you got into it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's probably, it's just something that's been with me my whole life. Um, it sounds like you should have a podcast, not these two assholes. <laughs> We truly I mean, the, don't know. The what we're fun doing. of it is, you, you, you know, you I just want to fuck Chris Bonds <laughs> <laughs> the whole pod. <laughs> well, it's very, you know, it's very zen of you and nice of you to produce this. And well, and I don't have anything to say about Jackass, really. I just like know the trivia, I guess, and have seen all of it. Like, I, you are so full of shit because you talk to me constantly about Jackass, and we spent most of last week talking about gymnastics. <laughs> That's true. That is true. That is true. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, should we crack into what we watched? Yeah. yeah. Let's get in there. So today we watched some sketches. Uh, we loved all of them. Yeah, they were all winners. They were like all like like kind of just the classic. Like every single one, one of us said, oh, it's that one that this person does all the time. Yeah. But like in a good way. Like yeah. it's 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 great. The the. This week was from um, the second DVD because we left the first DVD at home, so it's a little it's a little out of order chronologically, but um, but yeah yeah. What did you like? Well, I mean, we'll get to my favorite later, but I think like as far as like we all know which one's your fucking <sighs> favorite. <laughs> as far as what, um, like like I appreciated the most as like a jackass sketch was definitely cup test. I think we can all agree. That's an iconic. Iconic. I think that might have been in the first episode of the show. Really? Wow. This DVD is all like out of of order. I wouldn't have guessed that because of how well edited and streamlined the bit is. Because like I just have noticed a lot of their earlier things tend to drag sometimes. But like this had one, two, three. This had six parts to it. 
And it was all Johnny Knoxville just getting kicked in the balls or hit in the balls in various ways. Mm-hmm. Um, starting with kids. Starting with a line of children and their parents are present. Yes. Which we love to see. Yeah. And he instructs the kids. He, put, he puts on a cup. It's a, it's a cup test. So don't forget, they're testing the product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I forget that that's like the framing devices of these ones. So this this sketch has everything that I like about a jackass sketch. It's got a ridiculous premise that has nothing to do with what they're actually doing. Like, oh, let's test the cup. And then it goes, it, it just escalates way farther than is necessary. Uh, just surpasses anything you would then try at home. Like it, it definitely passes the point of, oh, my friend, my dumb friend would maybe do that. No, goes way farther. It includes uh, turning around and attacking the camera person. It includes Jeff Tremaine being a total asshole. Uh, it's, and, and it includes like that childlike thing where you like tape pillows to your head. <laughs> so it's just got everything that I like about Jackass. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's really, sm- you know, we should, I mean, I, like, I think. Ding, a, ding, ding, yeah, ding, ding. We need something. We need some like system for like, cause there's a lot of them like that. Yeah. We're like, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, we didn't, we, I don't know if you can tell, but we didn't discuss this before the show. But like, I think we should come up with some something like that, like, like an some sort of timer list. Yeah, that's scoreboard. like scoreboard. Sh- and like, what would qualify as like a perfect jackass bit? This we, would definitely be a contender. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, I thought it was. I mean, I don't care. Like, I wasn't offended, but I do think it was inappropriate to involve children. I loved the kids. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> There was something about that that did kind of weird me out. I don't, and like, I don't mean that in like a QAnon, sure, and like sure, reading sure, too sure, much sure, into sure, it. Yeah. Wait, I just mean it like, I don't know. Maybe it's just because like I'm, I like, I don't know. I. That's a fair point, but I will say that I think it's beautiful for a child to have the opportunity to kick a TV star <laughs> in the nuts on television. Because my main thought on this sketch throughout it was like. This is the only ethical millionaire. Yeah. If you're willing to get kicked in the nuts <laughs> and have fucking pool balls dropped on your nuts, and that's how you're making your millions of dollars, then you are earning it. Yeah. You no. are earning it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's really he he really does go all out in this one too, because then it's then it's tennis balls. Yep. Uh. So so it's kids tennis balls. Croquet, which is croquet, the, the the ball. I was slightly disappointed yeah, they didn't do the mallet too. They should have. Well, they just the cut right to Knoxville. the sledgehammer. Yeah, it being croquet is like such a Knoxville. It's so thing. Knoxville. Like, he needs to add some element of <laughs> little old movie, yeah. little old time. <laughs> he yeah. has to make it like twee in some way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always like it's it's it's. It, it's like Bugs, but it's like Looney Tunes fancy. Yeah, mm-hmm. everything is. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then there's Sledgehammer, which was the one I could not watch. And I'm gonna like I, I'm going to cut off my genital. I'm gonna turn my genitals inside out. And it's gonna be the most painful thing I've ever gone through. And I want to do that. It's something I'm gonna pay somebody to do to me. And I could not watch <laughs> Johnny Knoxville get hit over and over again in the balls. Oh, it, like, oh, oh, oh. too much. They showed it. It was like it was like attached to a thing, and they lifted it up, and it goes. Oh, and it's Tremaine dropping it. So you can't you can't trust. There's Tremaine. no mercy. He's the devil. And then paintball, and then pool balls. Yeah, so paintball was great because it got turned around and shot at the camera guy. You always got to, you're not safe. You can't just be a fly on the wall. Yeah, that's the first Spike Jones appearance also on this podcast. Oh, yeah. That was him getting shot. That was, that was Spike yeah. doing the, oh, I didn't even. Yeah, he kicks Knoxville in the nuts. <laughs> and then uh, Knoxville tells the guy with the paintball to shoot Spike. Now, I don't have a dick or balls, but... You got I, balls. They're just thank, inside you. Thank you. But I wonder, I was like, is it abnormal that he's like not puking and that he's still able to stand up and like walk around and shit? I think puking is only a reaction that some people have. Yeah. Because it seemed like he was getting really fucked up also, and then getting up and laughing and like. 
Maybe it's a really good cup. Kicked with a cup. I don't know. Like that. I I think he might have. So the pain he was experiencing probably wasn't actually on his his genitals. Isn't it like in the stomach? It's probably like the line around the cup. Yeah. Like hurting his oh. pelvic area because i used to not a lot of people know this but i played hockey whoa yeah i was forced to play hockey as a child um and part of my uh coming of age story was was telling my father no i am i'm in eighth grade now i'm not gonna play hockey anymore oh god and him saying fine um, <laughs> uh but and i got hit really really hard in the dick and balls once and it 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 isn't all the cup, all a cup actually does is protect your fertility. I think, yeah, because it hurts your pelvis yeah. really hard. It's 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 like having somebody Ugh. take a cup and. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> um, all right. So then, then Jeff Tremaine <laughs> from the top of a building, <laughs> Knoxville's against a wall, execution style, but on his ass, and then Jeff Tremaine's up there with a pool ball. And he dropped, but, but, but for safety, <laughs> for safety, Knoxville puts on many things so that he won't get hit anywhere else. It's funny because the, it's, it's pillows for his headgear, but the, the, the pads are hockey They're pads. They're hockey pads. He puts <laughs> yeah. on hockey pads and he duct tapes a couple of pillows to his head um, and he still gets hurt. It still hits the wrong places. And they have to throw the... The pool ball. They have back one up pool ball. The they didn't buy. That's some of the magic of early <laughs> Jackass. Is like MTV hadn't even paid yet. Yeah. Like they bought the concept and that's it. Like they <laughs> didn't. They didn't have any money. So he drops the ball. He misses. Somebody throws it back up. Misses. It falls on Knoxville. And he was bleeding. <laughs> and he was bleeding, and laughing. And then once they find, they finally get a direct shot. And then they pelt him with eggs. <laughs> <laughs> just, they they didn't have multiple balls, the like pool balls, but they it did a have a carton of eggs. eggs. <laughs> yeah, many eggs. Um, I can't remember who it was, but while we were watching, one of you pointed. I think it was Bobby. You pointed out that, and this is. I would also lump this under like the cla- It's a. It makes it a perfect jackass bit. Like you have Knoxville criticizing people for not hurting him correctly. Oh, yeah. Totally. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. classic Knoxville. Like, no, the, you see what you got to do. It's so funny. <laughs> but it's, he's like, he's like yeah, this. his legs are he's spread like, oh, and uh, <laughs> it's so good. And it's like, in like during the croquet mal, he's like actually getting kind of intense about it too. Like It's because he knows so much about croquet. <laughs> 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 I bet he does. He does. Probably I'm does. sure he literally, yeah. like it's the way some rich people play golf. I'm sure he very seriously plays croquet. <laughs> And I'm sure he loves the movie Alice in Wonderland. Oh, you know, by the end of this podcast, um, I think I'm going to be like, I, I don't think I'm going to be in love with Knoxville the way I'm in love with Chris, but I do think I'm going to be like a way bigger Knoxville fan. I love him, but like every, every bit I watch with you guys, it's like, I really appreciate him on this level now. Of, yeah. Of like he's, he's a dork. He's a total like yeah. Looney Tunes musical theater dork. We have a big, we have big love for Johnny Knoxville and what he's done. The show just wouldn't work. I mean, we, the podcast hasn't gotten into like jackass, the jackass mania of the two thousands, but like, it's such a simple premise, but no other show, like no one else can do it. And it's really just Knoxville's showmanship. Like he knows, he knows how to like be a leader and like put on the show. Yeah. It's because he's literally yeah. a showman. Yeah. From the nineteen twenties. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like I mean, that's like what I mean, not to get like too like highfalutin arts, <laughs> but I think that's what makes it kind of stand out above like just like a like a like a hidden camera prank show. Oh yeah. And like what also makes it not mean because he really is kind of the most positive presence and like I think this is something you see maybe more so in the movies. But like he's always the first one to really be laughing a lot and like sometimes it's played up for the camera but like I don't know, it's just I think that's really yeah, he's such an essential component. He tells us how to feel. Yeah. He tells us when he gets hurt, he tells us how we should feel about it. So we're not worried. 
which is that's a huge gift as a performer yeah it's beautiful and i'm sure there's a lot of there's a lot of times when he you know doesn't have a good attitude and they're very careful to edit that out (laughs) yeah you don't see that there's like in um well you know we'll do a, a whole episode about the movies but there's like there's an outtake from one of the films from the end where something goes wrong and he gets hit and he wasn't expecting it and you see him get mad Mm -hmm. and like he gets hurt and he gets mad for a second and you're like oh he's like a real person sometimes Mm -hmm. but in the show never mad never ever mad wow yeah i don't remember seeing i don't want to see that i don't want to see mad it's just for a moment yeah it's 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 a true anomaly i'm surprised they left it in there because it's also the one time the reason he gets hurt is because he gets scared like this thing is about to fall on it's the buster keaton like the you know where the wall of the house has a window and it falls on you they like recreate that so he's the window is supposed to go over him and he like looks up at it for a second and then like flinches and ends up like out of the line of the and it falls and on like him yeah and he gets mad for just yeah. just a moment he Oof. gets really mad and his daughter's there making fun of him yeah off camera anyway yeah. Oh, uh, one other thing um, that we can add to the, the the bingo card. He does call his 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 dick and balls my garbage. His garbage. <laughs> oh yeah. Check. Ding. <laughs> the garbage was mentioned. Yeah. It's so great. <laughs> like I after after I do cut my stuff off, I'm going to have the most beautiful vagina anybody's ever seen, and I'm going You're to call, call it, it my your garbage. garbage. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's start it. Really hope my parents... Yeah. They will never watch this. They're not <laughs> proud of me. <laughs> you know? Um, they made you with their garbage. What do they expect? <laughs> when a man and a woman love each other's garbage very much. Uh, all right. That's why they call it a landfill. Can I mention probably my favorite? Yes. Of the night? <laughs> it's th- it's four. Uh, my favorite of the day was probably um, Plunge Your Wake Up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that i mean i kind of expected that there's something speaking of silent film like yeah, that was a weirdly looney tunes moment for bam yeah for bam yeah. so this is a classic bam doing what he always does he's waking up his dad being annoying um but he he made it oddly presentational where like the camera's in front of phil and bam is popping up from behind phil and so he like pops up and he like shows you the boom box and puts it down and he's like <laughs> and he like shows you the pot and pan and puts it down um i don't remember if he showed the plunger or not i think so yeah he shows all three and then it just it's just one two three just like that he turns on the boom box he bangs on the pan and he just <laughs> he, ba- in the head. he bangs on the pan <laughs> once yeah he just it's yeah. like boom boom, yeah. boom, boom. <laughs> And then he's just like, yeah, and then yeah. he leaves. That's it. And My favorite part is the meta, like, yeah. Yeah. at the end. You gotta I believe he's playing that moment. Uh, CKY also. <laughs> <laughs> they I, were a band? Yeah, so, <laughs> okay, Jackass trivia. Here we go. Uh, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's confusing. So, Bam's brother was in a band called CKY. And Bam named his videos CKY, and they used the band CKY's <laughs> music and all the CKY oh. videos. So it's both. Oh, no. all right. But Bam is not in the band. I don't think Bam plays. He only plays the pots and pans. <laughs> 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 they didn't need a player. Of pots and Bam, and pans. wait, is Bam's brother? What's Bam's brother name again? Jess. Jess Margera. He's guitarist. Not the, he's not the. Isn't there a Margera we needed to cancel? Is there? Oh, are you thinking of Phil's brother, Don Phil, Vito? Yeah, that's the bad one. Yeah, that's Don. Guy. Don Vito is popularized through Viva La Bam, and then did a bunch of uh, bad, bad mm. stuff. Mm. Mm. We can cut that out if we want Bam on the show. I guess <laughs> you know. It's all right. I'm sure he'd agree. He's not going to yeah. watch all the previous episodes. That's true. He might. He might. I hope he does. He might. I just, hope you do, Bam. I, I hope you do. Like I, my heart goes out to Bam because I feel like he probably does something that that I definitely do. Like I look for bad feedback. 
Sure. Yeah. To like punish oh, yeah, yeah, myself, yeah, 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 and I'm yeah, sure yeah. he does. And I w- we're pro Bam. Yeah, I don't have any bad feedback for Bam. I know he's an absolute asshole as a young person, and so was I, and I relate to it deeply. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. A great um, Patreon episode would be the uh, the Viceland did a show that was like uh, profiling skaters. And each episode is like an hour long documentary. So there's an hour long episode about Bam that covers like his whole life. It's really uh, captivating. It's like the best episode of that show. Wow. He's a troubled man. I do want to, I mean, that is something I really do want to look at on on the show is I want to do very specifically like just a profile on each person because yeah. they all do have... I mean, like, I was thinking about that today, specifically with Steve-O and the worm trick. Mm-hmm. Um, the worm trick was Steve-O st- uh, snorting a worm. And, and then he, he hawks he, it back out he, as a loogie. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about, like, bits, like, oh, it's that thing you always do. The thing Steve-O yeah. does, where he eats an animal and then he spits it out and it's alive. But Bobby made a made a, a point of, like, watching Steve do stuff is very, it's hard to watch. And I really, and I think... He's very performative. I think he plays it up. I think it's like every time I watch a Steve-O bit, it's like I just see the circus man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm sure snorting a worm is, like, not pleasant, but. But he's like, all right, dude, I'm going to snort a worm and it's going to be gnarly. Yeah, every every Steve-O bit, he gets, like, red and is, like, like, coughing. Yeah. and And that's his job. Yeah, he starts the worm trick by like, like before he's even snorting, he's almost like shoving it in there. He's like holding his nostril open and like trying to cram the worm in. Yeah, and you know what? That's why he's one of the surviving stars. Yeah. You know, Dave England doesn't do that. That's why Dave England is, is not, a, you know, Danger Aaron didn't do that. That's why yeah. he's not a star with a tour now. Yeah. Uh, Steve-O, huge ham, was a bad person at the time. Uh, it's horrible to watch, and he is definitely playing it up. But that's why, you know, he's a star. Yeah. The thing is, stars are cheesy. <laughs> they just are. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's so... It's, that's why, like, the 90s are so... They just don't make sense to me because, like, a, a generation was just entirely about just saying fuck it to everything. Yeah. And, like, now we're all acting like sincerity is, like, this new invention. It's like, no, it's so clearly that is, like, what compels you to watch somebody yes, do stuff. anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not, oh, they're so cool and they hate. Then they're mad and there's five layers of irony. That's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, the tone of Jackass was never, ever, ever negative. And it got portrayed that way so much. And, like, CKY was super negative. Like, CKY is all about, like, metal and just, like, being rude to people. <laughs> <laughs> like, so many bits in CKY are, like, they go through the drive through and call the person the R word. <laughs> like, that's the whole yeah, bit. Yeah, that's and the whole show. And they do it multiple times. I don't know whose call that was, but it was so, so smart. Because everything at that time, like, you know, South Park had just came out. Everything was about being ironic and mean and shit. Yeah. Jackass very Jackass is just was. very spiritual and positive. Well, it's nece- it's like it's uh necessity being the the mother of invention because it's like they had no money. Yeah. It's like even like why these bits aren't really like edited super hardcore. It's just like a string out of footage basically of the best part. They're all cut like a skate video. Yeah. Like Yeah, I think it's like that's that's when stuff is good. It's like when you're kind of working against yeah. It's beautiful. Is my energy fucked today? Oh, I'm <laughs> so fucked. No, I Is our I give can't and take tell. good? Am I stepping on you too much? Am I, am Am I we, stepping on you? No. No, that's not why I asked. I, didn't, I wouldn't... <laughs> I don't do that thing where, like, people ask... Do I smell? Yeah. No, I don't. I never... Oh, it's yeah. you? Yeah, I would never do that. <laughs> because when people... It's like when somebody... Whenever I've seen anybody ever pull out a stick of gum... You think it's you? I think it's me. I don't yeah. even... Like, even if they don't offer it to me. Oh, honey. <laughs> I, I also... I any, love you. Anytime. Thank you. I think I need to hear that once a day. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna finish my Mountain Dew okay. and hopefully perk up a little. All right. Well, I actually... This, this is kind of random and doesn't have to do with the podcast, but this is probably a good moment. I have a gift for you. 
Oh my gosh, I love <laughs> gifts. I made you something and I did not wrap it. So, it's in wow. a jazz bag. This is exciting, folks. I have not seen this. You don't what have to is. like it, but I just want you to have it. I want to give it to you because. It's for it too, because I love all of your colors and all of your yourself. Can I hug you? Yeah. I love you so much. Oh, thank you. Of course. I love it. It's like a prayer shawl. Yeah, it, it came out, it came it did come out a little cultural. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> that was like know. the most Midwestern description of, did, of what you, you know? mean. A little world music. Yeah, it's like when my dad says ethnic. <laughs> <laughs> when my grandpa says uh, oriental. Yeah. My dad says that still. So. <laughs> um, thank you. Dad. So nice. Oh, absolutely. Because you, have we talked at all about you knitting on the show? I don't think we no, did. No, I've been into knitting. Yeah. But it's something you've known how to do. Since I was little, but I got, I got back into it just a couple of weeks ago and I've been very into it and. I don't want to wipe off my makeup. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's been cold and, you know. It's great. So I wanted you to have one. I'll wear it for the rest of the show. Perfect. If you take it off, I won't cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. That, oh, 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 I had another favorite. Okay. Which is um, Goat Fart. Yeah, that was the one I wanted to discuss. Yes. But you should tee that off. All right. Uh, I'll just... I'll just it's, gonna uh, take it's, a it, it, it's a very short bit. Um, <laughs> it's a great moment for Ryan Dunn. Yeah. Not oh, yeah. a lot of showmanship. That might be first Dunn appearance also on the podcast. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Rest in peace. What is this? <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> You're even it's Christian. Like I don't even know what that was. What yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's what Dunn wanted me to do. Um, I, I was like, I don't, what was that? Uh, so, okay. So goat fart. Yeah. It's not a goat farting. It's Ryan farting on some goats. <laughs> <laughs> it's he just, just farts on a goat. He just farts on on some goats. It's very quick. It's a couple seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even sure what was happening until it was all over. <laughs> it was so fast. And I remember reading goat fart on in the in the table of contents. So it happened really quick. And then I was like, oh, that was goat fart. <laughs> we should also say he doesn't really... He's like a good distance away. He's like it's goats behind yeah, it's a fence. Through a fence, yeah. It's through a fence, yeah. But but a moment like that, including it, really makes you feel like because something that's really special about Jackass is that that skate video vibe where you feel like this is just their lives and it's being captured on footage. Mm-hmm. It just feels like you're seeing clips of these people who live in this insane universe. Yeah. So it's just it's not he didn't pitch that bit. <laughs> no. They were just near some goats and he had to fart and a camera was rolling. Yeah, I I like it. Those the it's such like a in a world cuz like I've worked on like a lot of like sketch shows and stuff and like it's always the co- the big conversation is always like interstitials and like it's always I mean, look, not to get too inside baseball, but it's always the thing first seasons of sketch shows have a really difficult time coming up with because they always start very cheesy and bad and then go from there this show every single every single interstitial is perfect for the reason you're describing is because like it's literally like they were probably on their way to shoot another bit just saw some goats and then yeah yeah i love that or it's even possible that they were there to shoot something that somebody else pitched and it went terribly and they just this was the only good moment of footage. Yeah. You know? Yeah, the way that they made the show in their early days was um, everybody lived different places. Like, none of them... I think only Knoxville and Tremaine and Spike Jones lived in L.A. And so the reason you don't see them all together all the time is because basically Knoxville, Tremaine, and Spike were just traveling around the country. Like, they were like, we're going to go shoot with Steve-O for a few weeks. We're going to go shoot with Bam and his friends for a few weeks. Then we're going to go shoot with, like, Dave England and Danger Aaron. <laughs> so they literally were just, like... That was the shoot that like, nobody looked forward to. <laughs> yeah. It was literally, was like, like, documentary style. So what style. if we put a surfboard on the sidewalk? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, guys, I've got it. <laughs> yeah, because that was one of the ones we saw today, too, was snow... 
San Francisco snoreboarding or Snor- whatever. Yeah. Snor- snoreboarding. snoreboarding. Whoa. Freudian slip. Yeah. I mean, it was... Just kidding. It was a good montage. Yeah. It was like, you know, like it, it moved fast. And it's like arguably m- takes way more skill and, and is way more dangerous than snorting a worm. But at the end of the day, you're like, ah, oh, there's, there's, there's snowboarding down some stairs. Yeah. There they go. I wish, you know, one thing I wish, like a bit like that, I wish they had a GoPro. It would have been nice to be a uh, POV. Um, they weren't invented, Vera. Well, it's something. At the time. It's before you were born. That's true. Well, this, de- <laughs> this definitely was not made before. I was this was born. made so before we were born. 40 years old. It was made in the 1940s. <laughs> When all of this was legal. <laughs> oh, thinking about like the pre Hayes Code version of Jackass in black and white. That's just like like every. It's the same <laughs> show, but it's in fast motion. And but there would also be like way more like topless ladies. Oh yeah, with like with tassels. Yeah. It's the same. It's still Knoxville getting croqueted in the nuts, but then like there's some tassel <laughs> nipples. Yeah, nothing about Knoxville would change. Knoxville and Steve-O would be the same. They're the same. Yeah. There'd be drag too, because like all those, all those um. Party boy would be the same. Party boy, but sped up. Jackass would be the same. Be the same if it was made in the. F- they in just pre-code. didn't have skateboards. It's literally just classic movie sideshow shit plus skateboards. Um, you brought up Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. We watched a historic bit today. We saw the very first. The very first, this was like the moon landing of my horniness. <gasps> uh, oh my god! <laughs> comparatively, if you compared the, if you compared American progress to my sexual uh, appetite and orientation <laughs> appetite, <laughs> I am so clearly have not had sex in over. She a year. likes tearaway <laughs> pants. <laughs> she likes a man who's harassing a nice employee. He it was the first party boy bit. It was, it was the, the moon landing bit. of Jackass is what I was trying it, to say. We were mooned. <laughs> um, the moon did land. <laughs> I think what I love most about this is that you see a very brief training montage of him studying with I guess male strippers. Is it is it supposed to be that he's getting ripped in that one session? And then he's like, here I am. <laughs> I think so. And the dancing. Mm-hmm. Um, they're teaching him how to dance. Chris Pontius never gets hurt. He literally <laughs> only shows his dick and dances around and says something kind of cheeky. And everyone's like, we love you. You're invited. Yeah. Everyone else has to like get skin scraped off the head of their dick. And Chris Pontius <laughs> is just like, my bum. <laughs> like, <It's, he> just <laughs> but I mean, what look. if I went in a tanning bed? <laughs> What if I went to the gym? That's the thing is like, what it really was bow-tie? just like, oh, this is like stuff that I do to like make myself feel good yeah. about myself that he's just He doing. just had a spa day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if? He had a top hat also in that montage that he didn't have in the bit. When he's like learning, he's wearing a top hat. Oh. I'm glad. I wonder if that, that must have been a revision or something. Because that would have actually, that would kill the party boy a bit for me. Yeah. But the reason the party boy, I mean, apart from the fact that like I get to watch my man strip. Um, <laughs> my man. <laughs> uh, is, is. It's, it's, he's just wearing a track suit. So like, I think he really catches people off guard. Oh yeah. And like, I don't think he had the bow tie this time. He had the bow tie. Did he have the bow oh, tie yeah, this yeah, time? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm clearly not looking at You're the. You're not looking <laughs> at the bow tie. Neck. Moon landing. I'm looking at a neck, but not the one above his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite thing about the part, this rendition of the party boy bit is how much the music is his Dumbo's magic feather. So the first guy, he just turns off the music and Chris just stops. <laughs> and Chris just keeps trying to, he's like trying to turn the music back on. The guy's like, no. <laughs> and then he goes to a second place and the guy, fatal mistake, the guy walks away from the stereo to get away from Chris instead of turning off the music and Chris just follows him doing his little skip. <laughs> um, and he asks, and then he realizes he goes, he turns it off and then Chris stops. Yeah, you pointed out that he he looked kind of nervous too, like because really he's very confident in the other mm-hmm. iterations of it. I'm gonna try to do the skip. It's like, it's like it's 
Your hands got it. So part of the skip is also you've got the feet down perfect. The feet are down perfect, but you got to kind of he kind of T Rexes his hand, his arms a little. Like he 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 pumps, but oh. there you go. Oh, it's like he's here right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Um, <laughs> but something like that. Don't watch weird your coffee. <laughs> I just, I just save <laughs> our reputation at Bleep Productions. Uh, so sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The most jackass thing to ever happen on the pod <laughs> was when they almost spilled a cold brew. Wow. Oh, Bunch of, of wusses jack- in our generation. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. What? A funny Chris Pontius uh, fact is that he was not going to be part of the show, but he was the only guy they knew with a pickup truck. And so they were asking him to (laughs) move stuff. That explains it. And he would just like get on camera and like make jokes and stuff. And he just became part of the cast. And he was literally the only one besides Knoxville who can speak on camera. Yeah. So that's why he got cut. Yeah. Because it was all charisma. Oh my God. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Because, like, in Steve, I don't know if I said this last time, but in Steve's autobiography, he said that, like, he couldn't speak on camera initially. <laughs> so Knoxville used to have to introduce his bits, and, and that weird stage persona, that's the best he could do. He could, like, barely slate. He was so nervous. That's so wild. Yeah. Like, most of those guys, they just, like, can't talk on camera. They're They're, like... It all feels very effortlessly. See, then I gotta like stop. I mean, I'm not, I'm never talking shit about the editing on this show when I say that it's very simple. Oh no, I know. But like, it's, it's really, because like they do spit, like, I don't know. I've never gotten that sense from watching Steve-O that he seems nervous. Like they really do know how to make everybody shine. And I think that is like, that's like the hardest part of any sketch show. And I, I mean, this is a sketch show basically. But but it's it's true. It's very lovingly edited and it's yeah. very supportive. They want you to get hurt and do do make bad decisions, but it's very supportive. Yeah. Of that, and of everybody having a good time. I think it's really hot too that Chris has a pickup truck. <laughs> Folks, <laughs> who has Chris Pontius's number? Come on. <laughs> if you if you know him, if you have a way of getting in touch with him. We'll take anything. He doesn't need to be... I mean, I would prefer he'd be in studio with us. We will get him COVID tested. He doesn't even... If, if like, my... Because I've made it very clear. Like, I want him to raw me. Like, like I'm just to put that all out there. Like, if that made him uncomfortable, we don't even have to be in the same room. I mean, we've all seen his dick. I, I, think, I think it's fair. Yeah. I'm definitely also... I, I, I mean... Chris, uncomfortable? I think yeah, we're okay. like he, yeah. I think we're okay. You're it, definitely not the first woman to, to say that to him. Yeah. This is a movie star. He's, <laughs> his star this is, is my movie favorite movie star. star is Chris Pontius. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of the Jackass guys have ventured into acting. Is, has Chris ever acted in anything oh, that you yeah. know of? I think he was in that movie that they did Action, Action Point. Point recently, and that was acting. But that is the only thing I can think of. He probably just had a pickup truck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like fully I'm fully in now. It's like two <sighs> We're coming up on the anniversary of of people finding out that I I want to sl- sleep with really? Chris Pontius because I kept that to myself for for years and then at a Christmas Eve dinner which you came to. It's true. I revealed it to all my friends. Mhm. And they all had a good laugh, but <laughs> who's laughing now? Yeah, we might have him on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hope. Please, if you you're not watching, but and, uh Steve-O had a rap career also that never the album yeah, never Steve-O came out. Yeah, Steve said the N-word a bunch. A lot. He has a bunch of rap songs where he says the N-word. Pre Sobri- uh, uh, No, no, no. No, no. Are, oh yeah, pre yeah, sobriety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, okay. Yeah. We both thought you meant post. But I think we yeah. should do a whole probably down the line we should do a whole segment of any music that is adjacent. <laughs> I feel like we could do a couple episodes because, oh, like, yeah. I feel like just on CKY alone, yeah, yeah, which, you know, not to like produce the show on camera, but but like I would even say, 
I don't know if I want to do multiple CKY episodes, but we should maybe do one that is specifically for the music. Maybe for one music for the then, for that main video and one for I don't know. Oh, um so we one one thing I think we should do, we introduced a new segment last week called Jack Ast- Jack Astrology Jack Astrology. <laughs> Um, and you're yes. our resident Jack Oracle. astrologer. <laughs> yeah, Oracle's easier. I should have just said that. <laughs> what do you make? What do you make of that? What do you make of that fellow over there? Uh, well, he's definitely he's definitely a Spike Sun sign. Uh, but I don't really know what that means because I don't understand astrology. So, oh yeah, so oh, so yeah. so the, the astrology. Well, people, you people. Well, watch. a we're pulling this all out of our ass. It means nothing. Yeah, but. Actual astrology. A sun sign would be the personality that you exhibit outwardly to everybody. You know that about yourself. Everybody knows that about yourself. Your rising or your moon sign or your... Like, those are more, like, things about your shadow or, like, things that hold true to your personality for you. Yeah. So, we do... In Jack Astrology... Jack Jack, Jack Astrology... Yep. (sighs) We do that. We do yes. astrology, but it's jackass. But it's but I make it up. <laughs> I think I think I think you're a spike with the Knoxville rising. That's really complimentary. Well, what would you say? Because I'm pretty good at this. I don't see I what's invented. Knoxville about me. I guess <laughs> that's the thing is that nobody really sees it. You have an old timey silly dad vibe <laughs> oh, that okay. people don't get to see. Sure. And you're you're very funny privately in a way that in public you're a little more subdued. Um, and you do have a showmanship side. You'll you'll star in videos that you make yourself, but it's not the persona that you push full time. Like you could if you wanted to be a star and push like an actor persona, you totally could. But you choose like it's just not your main personality angle choice. Sure. I just also feel like I guess if I had to say it, I would do. I already forgot what they were called. the The main one I would say is Spike, but then the other one I would say is um, Dave England. Unfortunately, I can see that for you. <laughs> I can see that for you. Wow, that's like very brave of you. <laughs> There's like, I mean, I, I again, we want to have all these people on the podcast, so I, we don't want to like talk shit too. We're gonna much. talk big shit on Dave England every time. But as know? far we're as like, you join us. As far as the way that people react to bits, Dave England, like, w- when he gets hurt, he becomes, like, incoherent. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like I am a little bit like that. I you do were, think a about... massive bitch. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> his sketch in, one of the, in the second movie where he's holding the fire hose and he scrapes his ass when he falls. I think about that maybe yeah. every day. Maybe daily. He's just like, I broke my ass. <laughs> Yeah. Then he's sobbing and he's covered in mud and the blood of his own ass. <laughs> well, if that's how you feel. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of like, argue with you. I kind of like that giving the guests the option. Oh to, yeah, oh yeah. Cuz I do think like the the rising sign is hard if it like I mean you knew that about you cuz you guys, you know. I I as someone who's in love with you, like I am going to see Yeah, you see Knoxville sh- in I there. see I see Knoxville. All this time I've been fucking a Dave England. <laughs> 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 Little did I know, rosy glasses, I suppose. <laughs> uh All right. That's actually all the sketches I wanted to talk about. Yeah, I also think we need to wrap it up All just right. for us going yeah. to do that. Well, soon. so real quick though, got to do one last segment. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's the jackass dare. Ding 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 ding. So each week um as it's tradition on jackass. As it's tradition. <laughs> Ember and I <laughs> jackass dare each other to do something. It's uh, just like in jackass. Um the first time was a you dare you jackass dared me to burp in your face. Yep. Last week Orin jackass dared you to eat a leaf, a leaf. off of a house plan and and then regretted it yeah yeah and then he he didn't want me to eat it at all um too late but yeah you were already you already it was already down your throat it was down my throat i guzzled it i'd really (laughs) stevoed that leaf (laughs) 
and it came back up alive. <laughs> it surely did. The whole room smelled like a forest. It it's, smelled I'm lovely. sorry to like bring up old old jackass stairs, but it was really that was the most fascinating thing to me. Was I that think you, you're just scared of the next jackass stair. Yeah, so lay it on me. What? Because it's my turn. Well, we didn't really plant seeds to to yeah, lead up to this in any way, so it'll sound like I'm telling you to change your face. <laughs> I think originally as pitched, this was going to be more like the show I would set up that I was... We kind of organically seeded. So we'll... um, So pretend like it's the beginning of the show. The Uh, light of the sun has gone down. And I'm I'm down in the dumps. Vera, what's wrong? I'm just having a lot of uh, gender dysphoria around my face lately, but... Gender dysphoria? What's that? Oh, well... Just kidding. We, we <laughs> yeah. all know. Um, <laughs> I know. We all know. Um, let's, uh, yeah. But hey, let's go on with the show. Well, Vera, we'll hold on a second. Uh, fast forward the show. Yeah, then we fast forward. <laughs> I've been thinking about what you said before. You know, life is short. And you gotta, you gotta just let, you gotta just, you gotta just croquet that ball right into your nuts. You gotta live for the fullest. And isn't there, isn't there anything that you could do? About that dysphoria, or do you just have to live with it? I suppose I could get major surgery uh, on on the entire bone structure of my face. I could get a, a minor brow lift, a brow ridge reduction, a rhinoplasty, and some jaw and mandible contouring to sort of Whoa, combat that. That sounds gnarly. <laughs> I, therefore, hereby. <laughs> Very true. I jackass dare you to get facial feminization surgery and to have your mandibles cut open (laughs) and your bones shaved down. And I dare you to do all of this. All right. I accept. I accept the dare. I accept the jackass dare. And I will try to get a camera in the room while we do it, I guess. I hope you are asleep and on so many drugs. They will not. They will probably not let me film it. Probably not. Probably not. I wonder if I could. Well, if not, we'll figure out a way. Either way, you'll see the results next week. <laughs> Dang. Next time we see you, you better... I'm th- gonna I'm gonna be happier because I will look more how I feel on the inside if we're gonna simplify the trans experience. Do it. Say say I'm Vera Drew and this is the this is the face off or whatever. <laughs> I, I'm Vera Drew and this is the face off. The, then we'll cut to a, a montage. Yeah. <laughs> Set to the Jackass theme song, but it's surgery footage. <laughs> we'll just get some like some off of YouTube. Just yeah, give we'll me anything. <laughs> I mean, I could like I'll also see. I don't know. We could we'll, we could come up with something like could cut open like a Barbie doll or something. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Pumpkin. Oof. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I have been describing it like a pumpkin. Reach into a bowl of spaghetti. Um. Well, fuck. That's fucking gnarly. Yeah. But I'll do it. I'll do it because I value our friendship and I value our jackass dares that we share. Because I just came up with this and pitched it just now. Yeah, it was not something not that I was on, on a table. waiting list for for a for year, a year no. and thought I wasn't going to be able to do this year because of COVID. And I'm still kind of worried there might be another shutdown and I won't be able to do it. But... If you, if you don't do it, then you are... A pussy. A pussy. Yeah. <laughs> We can say it. You're a pussy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I trans people can say it, it, whatever the fuck they want. True. And and yeah, and you came out this year, so you could say whatever you want to. Is that respect the my gender queer? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you came out as Cartman, so you can say I whatever you want. I came out as Cartman this year. Cartman has said it all, man. <laughs> Cartman said it all. <laughs> um. Bobby, do you have anything you want to pit plug? I think I want to pitch. <laughs> you want uh, to pitch us a show? I know. You didn't get Jackass Dared. You got lucky. Yeah. I. The lights got really dark in here, and I look like the sketch of the Unabomber. Um, anything I want to plug? Uh, no. All right. Oh, wait. Actually, yeah. Go watch uh, this documentary I made about uh, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> do watch it do watch I've it heard it's great really things good. i'm saving it for post-op to oh, have yeah. stuff to watch <laughs> but i'm very excited because i hate the clintons so much 
I did make you, I did give you the scarf now. I was, I was going to give it to you more t- in towards the holidays, but I was like, it's cold now and you're going into surgery and you're going to be alone in your well, house. That's why, and I that's why it that. really, me- I mean, now I'm like uh, breaking the, the character that I, the really interesting and developed character uh, <laughs> I was playing that would accept a jackass stare of getting FFS. <laughs> um, but no, that's why it means a lot. Cause somebody got me a, a prayer shawl before I got my boob job. Oh yeah. And it like, it, it really, I don't know. It means a lot. Thank you. Of I love course. you. You're my best friend. I love you too. I'm just so glad we're doing this show together. We touched tips. So that's welcome to jackass with. V- <laughs> this has been welcome to jackass. <laughs> I almost said my dead name. I keep almost dead naming myself. <laughs> I had a nightmare where I misgendered you. Oh my god! It was horrifying. Don't ever worry about that. <laughs> it was so You're the, dumb. Of all of my friends, you've like never done it. No, <laughs> I know, but I, I, I want you to know I did once in my dream. <laughs> Um, I like jokingly called you sir in the way that I would call anyone sir. Oh, but well you that, were so, in the dream. You were just like, oh my and then god. I was like, <gasps> like in that child, like, oh no. <laughs> did I ground you? <laughs> <laughs> you were my mom. Um, <laughs> it, you should be allowed to ground your friends. <laughs> yeah, citizens arrest. You guys got to get out of here. We got to go. (laughs) All right. Uh, Listen to my record, Cheryl, and tune into the next stream to see uh, a cut up version of my best friend, Fear True, a new and improved. uh, Yeah. I'm probably still going to be swollen, but. The Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. All right. I love you. (laughs) Great. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you.